times four points where the concentric knockout is attached to the panel and it easily break out. So it's not considered a good connection. That's why you have to have a bonding bushing. Okay, everybody. So when you're looking at a main service, you're gonna see this more often now because suddenly we've mentioned it to you and you're gonna see it and go, wow, I never noticed that. So when it's not there, it's really noticeable. <laughs> And when you write it, the electrician comes back and says, who are you? Uh, in a good way. <laughs> okay. Um, this green jumper thing here, Harris? All right. That's a, a bonding connection between metal ducts. Oh. Huh. Wait a minute. Are you telling me all duct work has to have this if there's a flexible boot between two pieces? That's correct. Yes, because you must bond all metal connections together back to the electric service. So are you telling me this is required on residential and commercial? That is required both places. Because electricity is the same for residential and commercial? No difference. <laughs> okay. And we're doing this because why? We just like to put wires on there or we're trying to protect someone from getting... Well, if that, if that duct became energized and you happen to ground yourself, you would be in a part of the circuit. You could get electrocuted. So you, maybe you get shocked, huh? Well, you can get electrocuted. You could oh, die. That's even worse. Yes. Okay. Harris, why do I have this pipe, <laughs> metal pipe? Is this bonded or grounded? Those are bonded. You're bonding all the pipes together. In fact, you have that sprinkler line above. That should be bonded also. Okay, so these are the two whole uh, straps that are on here, and these are okay for in free air, but uh, if we looked at them, they wouldn't be able to bury those in concrete. Correct. They're not approved for concrete at all. Okay, so this, this bar here has different size holes with different screws. Look how many there are. So in most of these panels, Harris, there's enough room here to put one wire per lug if they had to. Most of the time, yes. Oh, cool. Uh, are we required to report on the on the source of grounding? Well, you have to report that you can find a ground. Okay. Is it, you think this 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 solid number six wire is the grounding method? Yes. Okay. So there it is. You can see it, and uh, we don't know where it goes. <laughs> uh, Harris is. I don't understand why this this bonding wire is so small on the gas line on the exterior? Well, because a bond only connects the pipe electrically back to the main service. It doesn't have to carry any large amounts of current. Ah, uh -huh. and this- In other words, you're neutralizing, you're neutralizing any voltage that might be in the line back to the service so that it, you know, it's not energized. I see. Um, I don't understand this. This gas line here is rusty, but down here it's not. Well, because that has the coating on it. Ah, oh. and the other is black pipe. Okay, so black iron pipe is allowed to rust. Well, it's not supposed to. I mean, it's allowed to oxidize. Yes. Thank you. Okay, everybody, take a look over here. You see this wire mesh that's a quarter inch. David, you want to handle this one? Quarter inch is good for combustion air relief and combustion air. Okay, uh, so I need one at the top and the bottom of the uh, mechanical room? Right, and I need 100 square inches of combustion air. Okay. 50 at the top and 50 at the bottom. Okay, air relief and combustion air. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Harris, why is this bonding jumper here? Well, because you have two pipes that are going into a water heater. And of course, you have to connect them. So they, again, they're bonded together, can't carry any electrical current. Well, are you telling me that at the water heater where I have a dielectric union, electricity can't travel down that across from hot to cold? 99% and back? of the time, yes, there's a dielectric, which is an insulator. So that's why this is supposed to be there. That is correct. Now, does that mean I can have plastic behind the wall then? It's possible. Why would I do this then? You know, I would leave it because you don't know what's behind the wall. 
Well, let's let's pretend I'm building it. If I built this and I put that there, then most likely I have copper behind the wall instead of plastic. Right. Then you would be bonding the pipes correctly. Yeah. Okay, everybody. And brick, brick, and correct me if I'm wrong. Wouldn't there also be a, a plate behind the wall if we're building that correctly? Yes, there's a plate that bonds these two together. It's a nailing plate, and what it does, yes. it it takes up this isn't needed. If I have copper behind the wall, there's a plate that makes that path. We'll show you one. We don't know it now. Huh? We don't know it now. Well, we don't know it now, yes. We don't know what's there unless we cut a hole in the wall. That's another path of money for you guys to cut it open and figure out what kind of uh, piping you have. <laughs> Okay, here's a grounding rod, and if you look really close, you can see here it has the little label on it still. Someone pound, and it's beveled at the top, so someone must use a jackhammer to pound this baby into the ground. Um, Harris, I'm I'm looking at this this clamp here, and it looks like it's it's louvered here on the back. Can I just flip that over and use it on a bigger pipe? Yes, that's what it's for. In other words, it's it's a multi size clamp. You can go to a pipe or to a rebar. Okay. And I thought you said this has to be underground to be proper. That's correct. Eight feet is supposed to be in the ground. Okay, but can which it be... makes so that's the wrong kind of connector. Yeah, okay. The connector's wrong. So most of you wouldn't know what you're staring at, but it looks wrong to me. So I take a picture and say an electrician needs to verify that this grounding rod has been installed properly with the proper connections. I don't need further review. I need repairs. Wouldn't you say that, Harris? Absolutely. Okay. Wow. You agreed with me. That's awesome. It's not often. Yes, not <laughs> often. Okay. Uh, extra credit. David, can you tell us what we're looking at right here? Uh, looks like we've got a we've we've got a jumper. Yeah. So right here I got a copper jumper like. coming up. Okay, Harris, why? I don't understand. You mean I'm running a separate ground wire inside the wall? Yeah, that's what they used to do many years ago, back in the 50s and 40s. They'd run an, an external ground wire from box to box to box to box, back to the service to give you a ground for the box, not for the receptacle. So, but if this were there and I was able to check continuity, I could use this to make a grounded outlet? Not really, because it's not considered a good ground. Yeah, so it's still not a ground, everybody. Now, no, you're grounding the box. Yeah, you're grounding the box. Um, so this is plasterboard. If you look and you see these little gooey things coming out of the wall, this is called button board. Rock. What is it? Button board. Button board or rock lap, just a brand. Yeah. So we know this is plaster. So this house is built after wood lath was used. So. Look at the 40s and 50s, maybe up to the 60s on this, and then drywall. So the system we're having, grounding. Uh, when did grounding come into play, Harris? What year mainly? Right, oh, right from the beginning. You know, you're talking 50, probably 60, 62, 63. Okay, so let's pretend it's the late 60s, and um, we're going to see that more so, even though it was part of the code, and Harris was doing some wiring then. Um, but we're not going to see it used as much because it was so much effort. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a motor on a pool, and I, I hear some electricians running around saying, oh, you don't need to do it because it's double insulated. Harris, there there is a little thing here to put a wire in, and that wire... Right, that's cool. Uh -huh. It's called a lug, and if your motor is equipped with a lug on it, it needs a ground. Oh, so you're telling me even though it's double insulated and they put this little device here, I still need one, right? That is correct. Yeah, okay, everybody, look right here. Here it is, there's no wire hook to it, so it's bad. <laughs> it's still bad, okay. This is a shiny, now this is, <laughs> this is back when they had to have a special inspection. You jumped down in the trench, you, you read this thing and you, you could see if it was approved for direct pouring of concrete, it's brass, the screw ties into it here, it loops in, um, and this clamp here, brass screws, so this was approved for direct uh, burial, and it's hooked to the rebar. Today, they don't like this. They like to see it above the concrete slab, but this was a special inspection that had to be done. You uh, know why? Yeah, tell me, Harris, why? The reason, the reason that was eliminated, that the rebar now comes up 
through the footing, through the stem wall, is because people used to come by after work, cut the copper, and steal it. Right, yeah. So so we're no longer doing this. You set up the night before, and then the next morning it's gone, you pour, and no one cares. Here's another connection right here. This Same is, thing. This is the new protocol, correct, Harris? Correct, and you have to have an access box where you have the connection point. So if you're doing an inspection, these are going to be in the garage. Is that where they're at, Harris? 99% of the time, yes. There'll be a double. There'll be a double. A double cover plate, like you see here. This is a plaster ring or drywall ring, and um, it's in the garage. So you can unscrew that and go. I can't believe it. There it is. That's what that plate's for. It's not electrical. So this is a pretty new construction. Uh, if you take a look here, here's fire foam sprayed between the gap of the bottom plate. Um, that's supposed to be uh, pressure treated wood of some sort, right here. Maybe it is. Um, here's the pressure treated wood right here. Mm -hmm. Here's my anchor. Diagonal bracing. I don't know why. Uh, now there would be sheathing there. Harris, would you say anything about all these wire nuts inside the main panel? Well, <laughs> Harris, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> uh, can I can I can I make short wires longer so I can hook them up to the breakers? Yes, you can. It's well, I'm allowed, to... allowed. So let me ask you a question. Long... I'm allowed it's to allowed make short wires you longer. Have you have to have wire a space in the top that allows for the splicing, or space on the side that allows for the splicing. Okay, so Harris, I'm going to point up here. You see here where I have this, like I don't know what it is. A wire nut fell apart, and there's two white wires. That's not unsafe there, is it? That That's supposed to be insulated. It's a neutral, but it's supposed to be insulated. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here to where this, this wire's cracked and I see some bare exposed wire hooked up. Excuse me, and there's two and that's, types of wire under and that's the wire dangerous. nut. That's dangerous. Okay, bad. it's bad. So is a red wire nut okay for number eight wire? Typically, you have to go to a blue and uh, red is too small. Now you said the word typically. Are you telling me that I could squeeze that wire into a red wire nut? Well, you could squeeze it in, but it's really not the right connection. So is it, it doesn't give you a good connection Harris? point. Is it wrong or not? Wrong. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Red wire nuts are for smaller wires. So you write it up and you move on. You let the electrician fix it. Harris, can I take a black wire and wrap it with green tape and make it a whatever green's for? Yes, that is perfectly legal. But can I ever take a green wire and wrap it with black tape and use it as a hot wire? You can't use green for anything other than a ground. Okay. In the code, I had to look this one up. In the code, is any wire besides the green wire designated as for a color? Can I use any color wire for hot that I want? You could use any color wire except a green, a gray, a white, or a white with a stripe on it. Okay, does everybody understand? You can't use those four colors basically for any hot wire ever. You can't wrap tape around it, it's still wrong. Okay, so either way, we would write this up as repairs needed. You don't have to say a lot about it other than the fact it's it's dangerous, it's unsafe, it needs immediate repair. Look at all this exposed wire. Now, Harris, do you think that's you think that's copper coated with tin? Or do you think yes. that's yeah, that's copper coated with tin, but it's very old and you can see that the insulation fell off the wire. Well, wait a minute. Me. Harris, earlier we said that it would be cloth covered wire. <laughs> and that's yeah, not cloth covered wire. Not every not every wire was cloth covered. There was single braid and double braid, and then you went into the plastic type, and they sometimes would dry out and crack. Okay, so this wire right now, we don't know. It potentially could be aluminum uh, in verse, versus tin, but it still doesn't matter. It's still wrong. It's possible, yes. It's possible, okay. Okay, um, David, do you want to handle this one?
No, probably not. It's okay. just bad. It's just bad. It's bad. Okay. Um, Harris, you wired this there's up. No, there's no connector. There's no connectors. Okay. So, Harris, you wired this up to your garage. What is it? This It should have been triplex wire, and it should have been, you know, this is the wrong type of connection, the wrong type of wire. It's too small. It doesn't have any place for stress. So, uh, you can't use that type of wire overhead. Triplex is the approved type. Okay. So, it, all you people that move from back east, this goes from every house to every garage ever built west east of the mississippi this same connection two wires to go out there and turn on the lights it's usually bare copper wire if you touch it, you get the hell knocked out of you and then it comes here and you can see a piece of romex because they were trying to trying to make it work it's still unsafe just like harris said and you write it up and move on okay uh this looks like square d to me harris is this a subject yes, or a main it's a square d panel yeah i see that is it a main or a sub panel well, it could be a main panel. If it is, we can't really tell. Does it it have doesn't have a main breaker, but it could still be a main panel. Okay. So I'm looking here, and so Harris told me some things earlier he doesn't like. The wires come out and make a sharp turn. I don't like that. So he told me he doesn't like it. Here I see some wires coming out of here, and I see two wires wire nutted together, and they continue up. I see some cloth covered wire. I see a ground coming out. So the cloth covered wire probably doesn't have a ground, right, Harris? Right. Okay. So I have different types of wire. Oh, okay. So here's a big fat wire up here coming in. And I have a the neutral tied into the neutral bar. And I see this wire here. So this looks like a sub panel to me, because I'm I'm feeding this with this like number, what do you think it is? Number eight, number six yeah, wire. Number eight, 40 amps. Yeah, 40 amps, okay, uh, for this. And then I got these breakers down here. Um, so would you write anything up on this panel, Harris? Well, this panel, um, <laughs> Harris? there's a lot wrong with it. The neutrals and the grounds are on the same bus bar. Oh, okay. So right here, bad? Bad. Okay, so I need another bar on the side? Right, you need a separate bar for grounds. Okay, that's number one. Bar. What else? Use for the defense. Anything else, Harris? Well, again, the, the wires are, you have the covering of the wire coming into the panel more than an inch. They need to be skinned back. Up here? Yep. Okay, over here? Over there and and, and in the next two over. Okay, I have a question for you, Harris. These these are wafers, uh, square D. Does, does square D also make a tandem wafer? Yes, they do. Where does it say square D on here? Well, that one doesn't have a square D name on it. Okay. However, the square D tandem breaker has got two switches in line, one behind the other. Yeah, so what he's telling us, everybody, this is probably a non-brand Don Square D breaker installed in this panel, and and maybe if it got unplugged or find out they just made it fit in there, so we'd have to write down that a non-conforming uh, breaker has been installed or a non-brand for matched, not mismatched. Now Harris doesn't care because back in the good old days we didn't care if they matched. You're just lucky they fit in the panel and you wired it up and moved on, but uh, you'd write that up. Anything else, Harris? Uh, no, everything else looks okay i guess yeah so the electrician and we'd ask him to fix this and make the panel safe when they're done and make sure everything works okay harris i i like to leave i like to take the breaker out and then make it a junction box um is this okay by code well as long as you can screw that other the cover shut where it can't be open like that you mean the one we flipped open that's right okay so if we sh we shut that we're fine Right, if you locked it up, right. Okay, perfect. Okay, Harris, is, is is smoke a problem? It looks like a small problem there. Okay, so did the electrical service uh, scorch the wall or did the telephone get so hot that it sort of blew up behind it? Which one was it? Oh, I'm sure that the electrical service scorched the wall. 
and damaged all the wires around it. Okay, so can I just f fix this by wiping this off or am I gonna have to cut open the wall and check and see how far back the wiring's melted in the wall? You have to open the wall and replace the damaged wiring completely. Okay, how far back do you think it's damaged? Well, you might have to go back to the next receptacle uh, where it comes from because you can't just splice inside a wall. So you have to replace the entire run. Oh, so you just said something very important. So you're telling me I can't splice, I, uh, put a hidden splice in the wall between one receptacle and another. No, it must be accessible. So hidden splices are bad. Very bad. Okay. So if I see a splice up in an attic, it's not hidden, but I can see it and it's not in a box. That's bad too. It's bad. Okay, bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a cloth covered wire, Harris. I see it right here. So you're telling yeah. me that's 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 copper coated with tin. That's correct. Okay. So up here I see it. And if I want to take a screwdriver or something, I could scrape that off and see if there's copper under there. Well, you could, but nobody ever does that. Oh, okay. Thank you for reminding me not to do that anymore. Um, okay, so I see two wires of dissimilar size put underneath this lug here, Harris. Can I do that? No, you're not allowed to do that because you have, number one, it's called double tapping. And that lug may not be rated for two wires. Is it ever the rated for two is. wires of dissimilar size, Harris? And I was going to say, the next thing is they're not the same size, so it wouldn't be allowed anyway. Okay, thank you. So everybody, do you understand? We know a lot of stuff, and it doesn't matter how much you know, but if I got two wires and one is big and one is small, they shouldn't be together underneath the lug. That's all you got to remember, everybody, okay? Harris. Yes. For a lightning arrestor. Today, a lightning arrestor, they told you to do that and you did it because it said so. Today, a lightning arrestor should be installed how? On a two pole breaker in oh, the panel. Okay. So these two wires would be installed on a two pole breaker plugged into the panel. Yes. Ah, cool. Okay. Back here on the right hand side where I'm pointing, I see a I see a, a little, I don't know what it is, like a little piece of flat wire. Bonding strap. Oh, bonding strap. Okay, so it's bolted here, and it comes up, and then it fits into this, into this area. This is probably the main panel, right? That's a neutral bar. Neutral bar. Oh, okay. Neutral oh. bus bar. Bus bar. Neutral yes. Bar. Yeah, neutral. Hey, how do you spell the word bus, everybody? One S or two S's. S's? One S. One S. Bus, B-U-S-S, -S is a brand. Okay, everybody, so let's stop misspelling it. Bus is a brand name. Harris, I've always wanted to know why this jumper was installed from here to here. Well, that was a three-phase panel. Huh. <laughs> and there was only a 200, 120, 240 volts available at the power source. Is that okay today to do that? Well, it's not okay because you're double tapping the, the center lug. Right here? Mm hmm With two wires of different sizes under the same lug that's not designed right. for it? That's correct. Okay. Main electric services, are we required to report on these per the SOP? Yes, we are. We are. And Harris, I can't remember the distance. What is it from the ground up? 10 feet. 10 feet to the drip loop. Way over here. Right. Okay. There's a driveway here. What's the difference now? Now you have to go 14 feet. And if it's a public driveway, 18 feet. 18. Yep. So is, is it 12 or 14? I can't remember. Well, it's, okay. it's 12 to 14 feet over a private driveway. Okay. 18 feet over public. So can I ask you which one is it? 12 or 14? This should be this well, should be 12. 12. Okay, let's say 12, everybody. So 12 feet. Now, most of you are going to say, I'm going to go take a tape measure and I'm going to go out there and stick it up there and measure this thing. Um, please don't do that. Just have somebody go out there and have them hold their hands up and see if they can touch it. Um, so this 10 foot rule, uh, those of you that don't know, is the height of a basketball hoop. <laughs> 
the hoop of a basketball is 10 feet. So I'm quite sure if I were a fly on the wall when they were deciding this, someone said, well, I can't ever jump up and touch the rim. Let's make that electric service wire 10 feet high. Well, that's back when no one could jump over six feet tall. Um, that's been quite a while. <clears throat> okay, Harris, when I go, when I have a knockout in a panel, am I required to have some sort of ring or bushing or something? Right. That's called a plastic bushing. Okay, I notice they don't seem to be handling it too well. <laughs> No, it's fine. That, that's an okay install. Okay. Harris, I'm that's, not going to know what this is. Can you tell me? That's part of a telephone system. I saw these on eBay, everybody. Someone was selling these. These are fuses. <laughs> They're selling them on eBay. I thought, well, that's cool. Um, Harris, how many volts are running through this thing when the line rings? Well, it's 120 when it rings, but it's 48 most of the time otherwise. Yeah, so that's why when it would ring and you're touching a bare wire, you, you'd get a pretty good shock. Yeah. Okay, so while I'm staring at this, is this big notch out of this floor joist okay? <laughs> no. Okay, everybody. You take a picture and you put it in your report and you're damning yourself by putting a picture that's so bad, but you're yapping about something else there like, oh, look at all these wires and, and the wires really aren't the issue. They took a saw because they, they could, and then they took a hammer and beat the crap out of it, made it bigger. Oh, they do have a hanger here. But either way, they cut out these, and I can't cut a notch in a floor joist where? In the middle third of any span. The middle third of any span. And can I cut can I cut 30% of the of the floor joist out? Never. Never. Okay. So that's an issue. I could drill a nice hole or something, but uh, that's wrong. So I'm going to write this up. And can we fix this by sistering a floor joist in there? Yes. Yeah. So right now there's no there's no cracking going each direction, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Okay, this is an old-timey box. It takes a second to look, but do you see the scorch mark here on the wood? Right up here. So is that a scorch or is that just from um, the box getting so hot it made the wood turn into charcoal? Most likely it was the box getting hot. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And, and that's paralysis. Yeah, paralysis. So if you heat wood along, uh, it turns it into charcoal. It's pretty cool. Um, this metal, this metal uh, conduit here, what's that called? That's called BX. Is that the same thing as MC or AC today? Yes. So the wire's inside of it. Well, some of them are cloth covered, some are plastic covered. Okay, but this, this original old wire doesn't have a, a good ground. Doesn't have any ground. Oh, no and ground. Okay. The only, thing, the only thing you're going to find inside the box is what's called a bond wire. It's a slink, a tiny little piece of aluminum wire that runs through the casing that's used as a bond. Okay, so Harris, this ring here is sort of weird. Why has it got this rounded edge underneath this rosette here? Is this is this a plaster ring that's used? That's called a plaster ring. It's, it's either 3-0 or 4-0 plaster ring, three inch or four inch plaster ring. And this box That's, here, is this box used for only dry locations? Yes, only dry. Okay. Okay, this box here, uh, David, you did the research on it. What is it? That's a fuse stat. Uh, that, and that uh, looks like a, is that a 15, 15 amp fuse? Yeah, blue for 15. And, yeah, blues are 15. Those come in multiple configuration and sizes. You may have heard it as an SRU. That's just a catalog uh, determination. So there's lots that go with that. Um, you're gonna find these at the blowers on your HVAC units. Okay, the blower or air handler. Harris, mm -hmm. why are these required? The reason that you have to have a fuse protection for your furnace or air handler is because when UL tests the unit for operational purposes and certification, 
if they have it protected with a fuse, you must use a fuse for the proper protection. Instead of a, a circuit that runs back to a breaker. Right, even if it goes back to a breaker, it doesn't matter. If they test the unit using a fuse, you gotta use a fuse. Okay, so on some new construction, you'll see these and others, it's not there, even though it's still required because it's the same unit, because their engineers have said, we'll approve it that way. Can I circumvent the manufacturer's installation requirements? No. Oh, I'm sorry, you said no, right? Well, you're right. You, yeah. you, know, you have to follow what the manufacturer says. They're the, they're the rules. Okay, so inside the installation instruction manual, it tells you what shall be installed there, everybody. It'll say that. Okay, um, David, you wanna handle this pointy screw thing? Oh, well, we, we don't like pointy things going into our electrical box. So let's uh, let's get the right screw so we don't accidentally uh, pierce, a, uh, pierce a wire and get shocked. So does anybody write these up when they see them? Yeah, okay. So pointy screws are, are not allowed ever, Harris? Never, never. Okay, is it in the, I hate to say it this way, is it in the code somewhere? Yes. Where? It's in the code that you can't use pointy screws in a panel. Okay, uh, UL listed devices don't allow pointy screws, anybody. So if you're gonna follow the UL listing, all the screws have blunt tips on them. That's how they come. Uh, what's it called, an assembly, Harris? Yes, it's a UL assembly. Thank you. Okay, Harris, what's wrong with this switched receptacle? You're missing a gasket to cover the switch. The you opening. One cover plate? Right. Okay, is this cover plate for a round outlet instead of a switch? Well, if you had a gasket, it would probably be the right type of cover. Uh huh. I'm In other words, they, it's they usually plate. supply you with two types of, of uh, gaskets. One is around for a, a single receptacle, and the other would be for the cutout for a, for a toggle switch. Either way, do you, does anyone write these up? Because the yoke, I can touch the inner yoke of the switch. Do you write this up, Harris? Yes. You do? Yeah, I write them up. Excellent. I feel better about it. every inspection you do now is better. So <laughs> Harris writes this up. Okay, take a look at this compression fitting right here at the bottom. This compression fitting. Look over mm -hmm. here. This is a compression fitting. Compression fittings can yep. be used outside, Harris? Outside or inside? Or inside. The ones with a screw in them where I have to screw it in, can they be used outside ever? No, no. only inside. Only inside, okay. So this house is really old it has a window that opens up so when there's a fire they can they can jump out the window and save themselves this is a building built in the 1890s and they knew they had to get out and save themselves somehow so the window slides open so it's called a single sash window but when they add electricity they put it really close to the window now harris how far away from the window does that electricity have to be you got to have a minimum of three feet of clearance from any opening. Three feet seems to be a pretty common rule. <laughs> <laughs> How far does a gas meter have to be from a, a source of ignition? Three feet. Three feet. <laughs> so 36 inches. Um, I guess someone must have measured everyone's arms and said, well, three feet seems to be it. It's the Darwin Award. Harris, uh, this is an FBE panel. I know you like these, so you don't see anything about them. Right, Federal Pacific Corporation. Yeah, so everybody here, when you remove the panel cover, if you do, one of these breakers usually falls out with it, and then you have to reset it and turn the electricity back on uh, because they're just, I don't know. I think the panel cover holds them in place. Um, Harris, do you write anything up about these? Well. <laughs> um, well, Federal Pacific panels, the biggest problem is the what's called the point of attachment. 
on a 20 amp, these 20 amp breakers or these 15s yeah okay that's the point, that's the point of attachment do you see that little slot at the end oh not the long one the vertical one here horizontal horizontal yeah, right yeah 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 there you go but go to the very bottom or the very top yeah that is the actual point of attachment that's what the breaker plugs into that's it it's a very poor connection they tend to loosen up okay when they loosen up they start to arc Garrett, when they start to arc, they catch fire harris i'm already home i collected my money i did my inspection tell me what you're going to write up will you well i look at the bus bar if the bus bar isn't burnt i say that it's an old panel it's obsolete and in the event that you start running into any issues or you have to upgrade change the panel out okay do most insurance companies say that we'd like this panel replaced? Well, if they find out about it, yes. <laughs> okay. So let's pretend they find out about it. So they say to you, I don't like an FP panel. I want you to upgrade your service. What's the cost of upgrading your service? Well, minimum of uh, just to change out a panel, we're talking probably $1,000. Okay. Let's pretend it's two grand. We can make it sound even worse. If you don't write down that this FP panel may not be allowed for the insurance company, you need to find out during your inspection period, you can make your buyers seem a lot happier if they can negotiate this out instead of having to pay all that money. They hired you to tell them something. Now, in some states, you're not allowed to tell them anything. Just say the, the panel, get an electrician to look at it. Um, and then they say, why'd we hire you anyway? So I write these up. Um, one of the questions I have here, Harris, I see a red wire and a black wire. Does that mean I'm sharing a neutral again? Yes, that is true. Okay, so whenever I see all these red wires, everybody, these are three wire circuits where I, a shared neutral, and there's something in there's some something in the in the code that specifically covers this thing. There's a whole section. I think it's a whole page that talks about right. shared neutrals. Before before you really go too far, what I normally write, and I always have a lot of fun with this, <laughs> but the real the real reason is I write that Federal Pacific panels have a higher failure rate than other normal panels, and that's why you should replace it. There we go, thank you, Harris. That's good. Okay, um, I see a 30 amp breaker here, and I see aluminum wire attached to it that looks like it's number 10, maybe? No, that looks like it's number eight. Oh, number and eight. On a 30 amp breaker would be fine. Okay, so we're fine with that? Yes. Okay, thank you. So I zoomed in a little closer so I could take a look at it and see what it really says here. So this is called a stab lock. Right. Um, it says it passed the United Underlab uh, listing. Right. It says it right here. It says um, 40 Celsius. Man, this thing could be used in a on a cold day somewhere. And it's telling me I can use number four wire. That seems big, uh, down to fourteen. But it doesn't really tell me anything other than this thirty amp two pole breaker is rated for one twenty two forty. Correct. What's VAC mean, Harris? Volts AC. Uh huh. So what's AC mean? Alternating current. Oh, alternating current. I see. Is that what all power is in residential houses is? Yes. Okay. Okay, Harris, is there anything there you'd write up? Yeah, it looks like you got a couple of burnt lugs, points of attachment. Okay. So once I see that and it's aluminum, it's turned black, does that mean it's damaged back inside the wire? Absolutely. Okay. You have to replace the whole thing. Now, when stuff comes in from the state, everybody, and a complaint's filed against you, and everybody can see this burn mark here, is there anybody who can't tell that's burned? Look at it. And some of you say, I don't know it's aluminum. Well, let's just read it right up here in the picture. See where it says the word aluminum on it? Mm -hmm. It says it right on there, <laughs> aluminum. Okay, so this block is one of the ways this company allows you to hook up a feed to run to a subpanel somewhere. So you're hooking up into the panel with no breaker attachment, sort of weird, but this is what they allow. Uh, but this attachment's all heat damaged. 
Does that mean the bus might be damaged, Harris? Definitely. If the, if bus, the bus is damaged, that's called an MLO, main lugs only. Yep. There's also, instead of putting the main lug attachment, you could put a circuit breaker in there to protect the panel. That's why it, it's a versatile type of a hookup. Yeah. So what I'm staring at right now, if the bus is damaged, what, what's going to be required? Replace the panel. Yeah, two thousand dollars, everybody. So when I see damage and heat damage here, don't don't be a pansy. Write it up and state that there's unseen damage potential. This needs to be removed from the the panel and verify that there's no damage to the bus bar. Replacement of panel may be needed due to uh, unseen damage. Uh, set set the mood because <laughs> I'm telling you it's going to be bad. Okay. We talked about water mains and a water pipe, and Harris had said that. So this this house has galvanized piping and probably block construction. What age is the house then, Harris? Oh, in the fifties. Okay, so I come down here, and here's a gate valve. Man, these things are old. And then I got a piece of plastic hooked to this, and they got a PVC plastic schedule forty <laughs> uh, screwed in here with an elbow. That's gonna break. Um, I don't see any primer in any of the fittings. Do you see any primer, anybody? Mm -mm. No. So now the requirement is that primer be purple so you can tell there is any, and the glue, some sort of color, so you know it's got something on it. Uh, but either way, there's no way I can bond to this because it's plastic. That's correct. Okay. Um, we use a mirror to look up underneath the handy boxes here, or the they're called Midwest because that's the brand. Uh, what's the other generic name for these panels, Harris, where the disconnects are? And a disconnect, fuse disconnects, or oh, call disconnects. Okay, so they're called disconnects. Everybody, we call them Midwest because they have the name Midwest on them. But if you look underneath here, th this has concentric knockouts, and they're starting to break away. Um, so we write this up. So these boxes usually need support. It even says on the installation instructions that a support should be installed. That's why you'll see some of these have an, an angled bracket down to the roof, or they're sitting in some sort of angled uh, bracket for that. Um, I don't know where this came from, out of some book or something. But uh, either way, this talks about the uh, different size wires attached onto a main that are different sizes. It's no. Um, does anybody use one of these tester things where you plug in something here? And um, so what's happening here, just to give everyone a point of reference, is this is plugged into a hot circuit right here. And up at the top, we're touching the, we're touching the valve on the water box to see if we get a ground. <laughs> and it lights up and it says, yes, we're getting a ground. So, so Harris, does that tell me I have copper plumbing or does the water have enough minerals in it to give me a circuit? Yeah, you do have copper pipes at that point. Hmm. Okay, so I have copper pipes. So this, one, this is one way we do it. Now we just cut a hole in the wall and stick a mirror down in there, use one of our, our special cameras that we have because we've elevated ourselves to another level. Um, so that's how we're telling. Harris, what's the flow <laughs> rate for a box? It's overcrowded. <laughs> overcrowded. Is the box overfilled? Yes, it is definitely overfilled. Okay, do I have wire that's the wrong size? I have low voltage and high voltage wire in the same box. Well, yeah, you have you have two different types of voltage. You have low voltage on the top right, and you have high voltage or 120 volts the rest of the box. Okay, so right here, everybody, look. Here's the outside brown insulation. And the giveaway right now is these little bitty wire nuts and the little bitty wire here, that's low voltage thermostat wire. <clears throat> if you have a heat pump, it requires how many wires for a heat pump? Low voltage wires. Eight. Six. Eight. eight. Well, if, if you have the heat strips, eight wires. Okay, okay. So bad. Now the, the brown wires, the insulation is not rated for 600 volts. It's only rated for 300 volts. So it's not allowed to be in a box with electrical wires where all the insulation on electrical wires are rated at 600 volts. Hey Harris, if I have a low voltage wire and a voltage and a wire that's higher, what happens when the two wires are next to each other? 
uh, the electric could jump from one to the other. Like a transformer? Yes. Transformer is not allowed to be in an electric panel because you have high voltage and low voltage. Hmm. That sounds bad. It is bad. Okay. Okay. Um, Harris, what am I staring at here? It looks like a 200 amp breaker, but it's broken down into four 100 amp breakers. One, two, three, four, you mean 400 amps? Right, so you have two, two 100s in parallel and two 100s in parallel. So a 200 amp service. Correct. Okay, and it says right here, service disconnect, and it says line one, line two. Right. Okay, but why are there four of them instead of one big gigantic breaker with one with a handle on it? Well, it's number one, it's cheap to manufacture. And number two, it fits into a smaller space than a regular 200 amp breaker. Oh, okay. So there's nothing wrong with this. But if I count these up, that's not like 400 amps. This is still a 200 amp service. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, can I put, okay, everybody, what we're staring at, first of all, this is triplex, right? Yes. Okay. Here's my connectors up here. Here's my standoff pipe here. Here's my main mast. Now, my mast has to be how how big for 200 amps, Harris? Two, two inch. inch. Two inch. Okay. So a 200 amp main is going to have, can I have telephone, cable, and a light fixture attached to my mast ever? No. Never, never. Never. Okay. So this is something that was done all the time, uh, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, hell, all the way up until 2000. You can't have low voltage attached to the main. Ever? Never. Never, never. Okay. So right over here, see this board coming off? That's not a board. What is that? Unistrut. Right. <laughs> Little H there. And the bolt's coming out because they attach it to something. So that's bad. But the light fixture was a giveaway for me. It allows you to see as you're being electrocuted. <laughs> okay, the bucket here, best use of bucket for light fixture. There it is. Yeah, it is protected. Maybe you will approved. It's yeah, you all approved. <laughs> Buckets are the best. It's your bucket list. Uh, Harris, I, I put this on the web and I had people come back with the craziest statements. Either way, um, this is a mini breaker. They still sell these things. <laughs> It's, Correct. It's resettable. It's UL listed. I, I don't know how you determine that it even functions or would shut off, but it's got a well, what, hap what happens is it's it's an Edison base type of fuse. What does that mean, Harris? Edison base is the same bottom like you find on a light bulb. So I could throw a light bulb in yeah. instead of this? Yes. You could put a light bulb in there, yes. I'd like to try that, Harris, and see if it really works. It does work. I, I know it does. Okay, so here's a purple one. What What is that? That blue is 15 amps. Okay, here's a, uh, it says 25 up here, so we're cheating. Right. It usually That's a 25 what? amp. 30. Tron, here's Tron a, means it's a dual element fuse. Yeah. And there's another one right there. Okay. Now, the, the mini breaker is the replacement for a fuse where they put the breaker components inside a fuse stat style and you push the button to reset it when you trip the fuse okay um and obviously in an old panel like that you should never find a 30 amp fuse or fuse stat or mini breaker or 25 for that matter um so this type s that means only that size fuse is going to screw into the holder? No. SL means slow blow. It's got a dual element in it. Okay, but if it's a Type S, doesn't it have special thread so only that size will screw in there? A fuse stat, yes. That's not fuse stats. These are fuse trons. Oh. And fuse trons are regular size fuses. Okay, they're fine. dual elements. Take a look at that that wire there, and you can see that it's it's copper. <laughs> there's, yep. there's like you have to look very hard. It's copper coated with tin on the outside. Outside. Okay. Looks good. Yep. 
this labels on the door or the service panel and it tells you the size of the service over here is 240. I guess it's not going to show what it shows, but Harris, how many how many poles can I have in a service here? Well, 40 circuits and 42, including the main breaker. You mean 40 Back. poles? 40 full or 42 with the main breaker. Okay, so a two pole breaker is two poles. Right. Well, that might be that might be one circuit. Correct. Okay, so it isn't the number of circuits, the number of poles in the panel. Number of poles in the panel. Yeah. So if I have a lot of like two poles and they're just one circuit, like the stove and AC and 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 stuff like that, um, that's all there is. Okay. So here's our panel box, everybody. This appears to be an interior panel box based on the look. Here's your two pole handles up here. Here I start to see these tandem breakers. It says kitchen wall outlets, and there are just a whole pile of them here. This one with the red lights on it. What's that, Harris? It's normally a, a GFCI. Okay. Or maybe a surge protector of some sort. Could be, could be a surge protector also. Okay. So usually our two our twin breakers allowed in the middle of a panel like this? Out of no, the normally panel. they're on, on the bottom. Huh? Normally they're on the bottom. Okay. So what he's saying is if they're normally on the bottom, this is probably wrong. <laughs> so if yes. We, if we look here on this panel, this one's not telling us anything, but we look yes, at the one that's here. Yes, it is. <laughs> if, if, huh? Go back, said, Rick. If you look close, you can see this, the schedule shows. Go to the panel schedule. The bottom here, see, they're double. One, two, three. Oh, right here. Yeah, they're on the bottom right. now. Right. Okay. Okay. So if I count this, there's 20 spaces here for full size breakers. And there's 20 spaces here for full size breakers. So this panel, I don't see any numbers, but it, it's telling me here that I can plug in different breakers, two pole adjacents, blah, blah, blah. But if I'm counting here, this is 20 full size and 20 full. So that's our 40 uh, in this panel. Yeah, but if you look further down, it says use only square D type. HDM or HOMA. Yeah, that's what it right. says. Breakers. Not a twin. Yeah, that's no, right. No, no, no tandems. No tandems, no twins. Okay, we'll skip that. Um, Harris, what am I staring at here? Looks like a piece of Schedule 80 pipe. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand. Are you telling me that conduit, PVC conduit, comes in different thicknesses? Absolutely. Comes in. 20, 40, or 80. Okay, so it even tells me right up here in writing, extra heavy wall, schedule 80. So is this right. rated the same as like uh, EMT or, 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 or metal pipe? Sure. It's, it's rated as rigid pipe, and schedule 40 is like EMT. Okay, so schedule 80 could be used outside exposed to uh, physical damage. As long as it's yeah, not exposed to physical damage. And if you run it in the sunlight, it has to be stamped sunlight resistant. Okay, and so right here, I'm not sure why this piece of wire is attached. I think there's a ground wire running across the top. But in the background here, they have this unistrut installed to help support it along a block wall. There's probably more going on, but we don't have the picture. Um, David, you want to handle this one and tell me why this uh, is occurring here on this water heater? Oh, we've got some dissimilar metals making contact there, galvanic uh, corrosion uh, happening. Does that mean it's to be yeah. replaced potentially? Yes, it does. Okay. So your plumbers yeah. always come, everybody, and says, oh, I'll fix that. And then when they get there, they go, well, this tank is shot. Yeah. Um, One more thing. The Romex has to be protected. It has to be in flex. What kind of flex? Well, just it's called flex, you know, EMT flex. Greenfield. 
okay. but uh, that's a brand. Yeah, Greenfield, that's a brand, right, Greenfield, yes. Okay, and so for either one of you, this is a, this is a, uh, I don't know, 3,200, 3,500 watt water heater, 3,300 watts. What size wire do I need for this 240 volt water heater? Number 10. 30 amp. 30 amps? Okay, so number 10, 30 amps. Yep. Okay, uh, we don't have a lot of basements here, but I put this in for those of you that would like to go someplace where a water heater is, or, or a meter. Um, so in this case here, the water line comes out of the wall, and this is important to know if you're doing a basement, if you notice, it's copper. <laughs> in some of these houses, this is lead. So this is where everyone's saying, I can't remember what I'm looking at. You take your screwdriver, you scratch this pipe, and you make sure that it's not lead because they put lead through the basement wall, out to the main, and that's where they hooked it up. Uh, it actually was in the code at one time, that's what you hooked it up. So if I come back through here, this yellow wire, Harris, what's that for? That looks like a bond to me. That's your bond, because I can run your bond. Ground. That, actually, that's the ground if that's the main water line. Yeah, that's your ground. So here's my shutoff. Now, there's no jumper here, because doesn't the water meter have a, a bushing in it there there's no dielectric in there yeah no dielectric okay and then i see a grounding wire attachment and here it is here it is just hanging here and then here's some more copper and then oh this thing here uh david you want to handle this thing uh, it looks like a uh, uh pressure regulator water pressure regulator okay are those preset uh, they are. They're uh, 50 to 75 pounds. Okay. And so there may be a label on it somewhere, but typically if this is broken, do I have to replace it? Yes. Okay. So that's my regulator. So that's that's line side water line here, but it's I still have a line that's not protected by pressure regulators. See it here? This is taken off and going up into the house with galvanized. Galvanized. And this new line. It has a pressure regulator on it. You've got some corrosion there at the copper and galvanized uh, where it's meeting. I don't know if that's brass there or not, that fitting. Right here, here, here. No, higher, higher, yeah, right there. Okay, how many right up galvanized pipe is having limited life in a house from 1940? <laughs> you write that up? Okay. okay. Yep. So well, something we've developed is you go to the water uh, tank on the toilet and you open it up and you look in there and there's a pile of rust in there. And that's what used to be part of the piping system. And then we take a magnet and we dip it in there. We show everybody, this is your pipe um, that's falling apart. And then we write it up and then uh, replacement needed. Uh, again, different, different configuration, but the same thing. Now here our pressure regulator is prior to the meter before everything goes up into the house. See, it comes out here and up it goes. Now, this basement wall, the reason I, I took this picture also, this has some, this white stuff on it has calcite. Calcite, which was, used to be called whitewash. If somebody could tell me what that actually is made out of, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> um, but uh, this was used on everything, as a sealer, as a paint. In the past, it was made to chalk. Okay, Harris, tell me okay. why this 100 amp main disconnect is bolted into the panel. That is required on a reverse feed type of a breaker. Is that back also called back fed? Back fed, thank you, David. So if the panel has no main disconnect anywhere and the big fat wires are supplying the breaker in the top or the bottom or somewhere, and that's the main, this has to be bolted in. Harris, is that Correct. a special breaker with that hole in it there? That's a breaker, yes. Okay, so these breakers are made especially for this purpose so they can't pop out and be hot because this wire yeah, is right. always hot, right? Yes, and it's rated at a, as a main breaker. Right. Okay. Harris, can I midline tap? Knob and tube? No, you can't. Every splice 
first of all, you can't splice or change knob and tube. If it's existing, uh, you can't touch it. The minute you touch it, it's got to all be replaced. Okay, so this is loom uh, coming down in here. You can see the wood is all pretty like. It's probably Douglas fir, but they put a staple here where they stapled some Romex and then this other wire, which looks like another piece of Romex. So mm -hmm. you, the, the flat cable here, so let me ask you, the flat cable here, is that like a two wire with ground Romex? Yes. When it's rounded in shape, is that a three wire with ground? Sometimes it is three wire with the ground, yes. Yeah. So it gets round once we start sticking more wires in there. And but it when it only has the two wires, it sort of stays flat. It's Romex, so you can pull it. Correct. And there's your loom. So this is going up. And so one of these is hot, one is one's not. <laughs> One yeah, right. is energized and one's not. Which one is it? Harris. Follow the insulator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be the one in the insulator. You have to remember, if you have knob and tube, they didn't even know. Harris, how did you determine which one was hot and which one wasn't? Well, years and years ago, yes. you weren't able to determine what was hot and what was a neutral because there were two theories floating around that electric went from plus to minus and another theory that it went from minus to plus okay so we never knew what this what the polarity was yeah okay so how did you find out which one was hot so you could switch it well you could take your your tester and go to a ground and whichever one would light up you knew it was the live one i thought you didn't have testers back then yeah we used light bulbs thank you did you also like lick your fingers and touch the wire to see if it was hot actually yeah that's not a, that's not phony that's the truth I used to use my apprentice. Uh, so everybody, I, I don't want you to think it's archaic, but it's not that far back. When I learned my electrical, the guy would lick his fingers and touch it. And then, you know, you get a little shock and go, oh, that's that's it. So the way we determined it, I would take an extension cord, run it over to a known source. And then now you have bolt sticks, everybody. You have these idiot bolt sticks. I like those. Um, and I can just put it here. It goes beep, 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 beep. And I say, that's the hot one. And off we go. Okay. Fuses. Okay, the first one says 35. Is that for AC, Harris? No, no, that's just a regular fuse, 35 amps. Okay, this one here says time delay, dual element. Is this for an AC unit? That's for an AC unit. Wait a minute. I thought you told me the ones with the slot in it were for AC units. Well, before they came up with the slot, with the rejection slot, that was an approved type of fuse for an AC. Yeah, so this one's been laying around a while. When you go to the store, you can't buy this. So if they're rated for AC, does this say dual element, time delay? Okay. Yes. It has to have the slot. So what's FRN stand for, Harris? Uh, well, FRN means that it's for dual purpose for a starting voltage. So a starting voltage, you mean like a motor? Yeah, like an air conditioner. Oh, like an air conditioner, okay. Um, so the FRM was for air conditioning. Okay, and what's the most, what's the biggest amperage I can get on a cartridge fuse like this? 60 amps would be the biggest. Why? Because that's the biggest? That's the biggest. 60 amps would be the very biggest. And then you go into the next session, which would be 100, 100 to 200. And wow. then you go from 200 to 400. Okay, well, we'll look at here uh, quickly and see. So I wanted everybody to see this is BX cable on different types that around. And here they put this little plastic fitting up here. And you can see it's cloth. <laughs> called, that's called the bushing, by the way. Yeah, the bushing here. Um, I have a whole pocket of those things left over from the last time I wired one of these. But all this cloth covered wire. And usually you try to connect it to the light fixture. It's all falling apart. I don't know why we're not shocked every second. Okay, <laughs> aluminum wire, Harris. Yeah, you have antioxidant on all those wires. Okay, so all this goo here, all this goo on the single strand wires. So every one of these is on a 20 amp circuit with, with 12 gauge wire, is that okay? No, it's not, 15 amps is the max. Okay, so this panel, I see these two aluminum bars here going up, not even knowing what type of panel this is. Well, actually I do now that I see this, is this panel in need of replacement? Aluminum wire, bad. 
And I see these, these are the aluminum, breakers that just sort of clamp in aluminum bus bar. That could be a Zinsco panel. Zinsco. You know, yeah. They're bad. It's they, Zinsco. <laughs> Zinsco panels, uh, what happens is the bus bars melt. Okay, so right they're aluminum. two bars, the breakers yeah. have to plug in over that mess. Um, so Harris, how do you write this up? Should be replaced. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Everything. Why? <laughs> well, again, aluminum is, uh, first of all, they probably have it overfused, my guess, at 20s. Okay. Like you were saying. Secondly, it's a Zinsco panel or, or thereabouts. So aluminum bus part tends to burn up. So a high because failure of, rate, Harris? Was that? High failure rate? Very high failure okay. rate. So high failure rate of these panels, it's known to be an issue. Your insurance company may not insure your building and replacement may be needed. Get estimates during your inspection period uh, to determine your options and, and what you're gonna do, okay? Yes. Uh, we like to tell our clients right up right up front so they can spend their time getting estimates and if they like it, they can move on and, and then we're gonna collect their money and we go home. Okay. So again, A is pointing at, um, what is this stuff I'm looking at, Harris? Tin, tin coated wire. Okay, but how do we actually call it? Do we call it tin coated wire? Yes. Do we use the word clad somewhere? Or metal clad. Okay, so it's copper cladded with tin? <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, thank yes. you. So it's, it's, again, it's covered with a, with a plastic coating here, but not, it's woven. It's woven cotton that's, exterior cover. Yep. That I is not plastic, plastic under this plug. Harris, linen. okay. It's linen. Linen. Oh yes, linen. Thank you. It's linen. Muslin, linen. <laughs> In the Gaza strip. Okay, Harris, I put this in here just for you. I I went to I went to the electrical store and they say, yeah, we sell a double tap connector for lugs. Um, and this thing here bolts inside the lug of the panel and allows me to hook two circuits up. And that is approved. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's approved, but you have two different size wires and this is a fused disconnect. So if it's protecting the big wire, the little wire is over fused. Yeah. So in this case here, this is cloth covered. So is that wire copper coated with tin again yes. and then yes it is yeah and so um i wrote it up the electrician came over and he, he changed it again but this is this is what we had and this was um the um the guy inspecting it said yeah that's approved i don't care <laughs> okay so harris number a these start at what size and go up to what size okay that's 100 to 200. Okay, so these are knife blades. What do you call them? Right, knife blades, and one is has a rejection clip in it. The okay. one on the right. Okay, this cartridge fuse here goes up to what size? Up to sixty. Okay, this little baby one. Well, that's up to thirty. Yeah, and down to. Uh, down to one amp. Okay. You know, something teeny. Is this Edison based right here? It's an Edison based fuse. Okay, is this Edison based? Edison based. Okay, just like D. D is Edison based. Okay, B, what is B? What is that B, for? It's a fuse stat adapter. It changes the Edison base to a fuse stat. So then only that size fuse will fit. That's correct. And they're color coded. Only blue will fit into blue, red into red, green into green. So if you look at the inside of this, you can see the color here. And the way you know is if you want to, if the house is empty, you could unscrew it and look in there. But uh, typically, uh, these are put in because they 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 can't be removed. Once these these little dudes are are screwed into the, you can't cut them out. Didn't they used to sell a cutter, Harris, to remove those? <laughs> yeah, I I used to have a cutter for that. Take them right out. Yeah, you take them right out and put an Edison base one in there. So it was so pretty. Yep. Now works good. Harris, these these were designed so you couldn't put a penny in, right? That is correct. Okay. They're too small. Yeah. So the Edison based one, you can put a penny. So these are designed so a dime or a penny won't fit in there. Right. They also used to sell what was called a slug. 
the slug was a a copper uh, setup like that with the Edison base screw and a screwdriver on the inside. You could screw it right in. Okay, so in the U.S. we have codes. <laughs> this this <laughs> one here, I'm not sure what country this is, but um, I think this is Tucson. Um, they just kept hooking up wires, and they're bypassing the electric meter. Um, if I take a look here, it's cloth covered. And then I look at the end here and I can see the copper and the tin on the outside. Right. This this is a piece of wire stripped down to show you the, all the layers that are put in here to make this work. So this wire originally was designed as a bare copper wire with tin on the outside. Why was the tin put there, Harris? It actually uh, takes away the corrosion and for better connections. Okay, so it prevented the copper from oxidizing. Correct. Okay. Uh, but why didn't I make the wire out of tin totally? Because it's not a very good conductor. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Copper is much better than tin. Ah, okay. Um, so this wire originally was designed for something called a telegraph. <laughs> so they had all this wire, and then somebody said, hey, let's use that for electricity, and we'll just put this outside coating on here. And then uh, suddenly uh, uh, they became uh, wealthy because they were able to use all that wire that they can't use anymore. Okay, aluminum wire says aluminum on the outside. Kaiser, Flex, 12, AL, two with ground. Harris, what type of protection do I need for this? 15 amps, max. Okay, so it's one size smaller than what would be required for copper. Yes. Okay, um, is the resistance level of aluminum twice that of copper uh no actually uh it's <laughs> if you go a thousand feet a thousand feet of number 12 aluminum is uh, i think 487 ohms and a thousand feet of aluminum number 10 is the same size as 12. uh-huh Harris, up Same resistance. Harris, stop. In other words, the resistance is much higher in 12 aluminum than it is in 12 copper. Thank you, Harris. Up up until now, you were very good. Uh, and then you just- I know. You I got carried away. <laughs> yeah. I got carried All away. I what can I do? Is, is, is aluminum bad hooked on to big breakers? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. This picture seems to show up all the time. And so this is a piece of hose, everybody, this green thing. And this is all heat damaged. Here. And I wrote this Correct. up. And the reason I, I show this every time is I said, there's heat damage. And they sent an electrician over and he said he didn't see a problem. <laughs> so I had to meet him over there. And I said, the whole bus is damaged. And it's melted. But here, look, it's melted all the way up yep. into here. That's what you could see. Yeah, that's what I could see. Okay, look at this one here. It's melted the panel. On, on your report, what are you writing up? Replace the panel. Um, <laughs> panel needs to be replaced. The panel is melting. It's been on fire. Immediate repair is needed. Now, do I need do I need this uh, review of this panel? No. I need review. This panel is, and I, I use the word toast when I'm talking, but I don't put that on the report. This is toast. Okay, this is single strand aluminum wire, 12 gauge. What's the protection I need for this? 15 amps. 15 amps. Okay, now they're selling some new aluminum up in Phoenix and they're saying it's for, formulated, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's the same thing they said before in, in 1969 when this aluminum came out and then all these houses were burning down. Um, you know, you get a house that's been around for 20 years with aluminum and it hasn't burned, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. Um, this panel up here, they, they could get enough wire stuffed into the 100 amp here. There's no screw, <laughs> it's still bad. And then I come down through here and I don't know, it's a mess. Uh, it's just, oh, here, here's why I wrote this up. I got a ground wire almost touching the bus right here. See it? Yep. yep. So here's the ground. Is this bus energized? Absolutely. Yeah, it's hot. It's energized. I give someone a nickel to touch it. Okay, here's your jumper for your water meter. 
Here's your jumper above your water, uh, hot water heater. Um, this is split bus right here. Here's your double top breakers. Doubled up. Harris, do you write up doubled up wires if they're not square D? Yes. Thank you. A cutler hammer also has a breaker that's acceptable for two wires. Ah, very good. Uh, we have four minutes. Uh, and then we'll be done. Does anybody have any uh, specific questions? Somebody said, uh, Christy, thanks. Uh, I had fun. I have to go. I don't know who Christy was, but. Um, okay. This Do you is allow double tap on square D? Certain breakers, yes. Certain ones. Which brand, Harris? Well, the, the square D that has the plate underneath the screw. It has to have a plate, there. everybody. Look, look at this one here. This isn't square D. But if you notice, it's a screw with a plug-in. But on the one with the double tap, it has a plate with two little U-shaped pieces on it. And that's the only one that can do that. This is a quad bracelet. Top, you can't even read this, but some of these have internal uh, trip on these. Others don't. So when this 30 trips off, this one's supposed to pull off and it doesn't, it doesn't shut off. Okay, so I don't put any of these in anymore unless they have internal trip. Because you go over and half the stove is working or the dryer runs, but it won't heat. Okay, Harris, why is this rejection uh, notch here? <clears throat> okay, that's where you could put a twin breaker in. Like that? Or a wafer breaker. So this is designed, so that's why- You have a slot. That's where you could put the twins or the wafers in. The solids are single pole only. Okay, what's wrong with item number C, Harris? Number C is a sheet, uh, as it's a sheetrock screw. So? Yeah. So? Not allowed. Why? They have no shear, they have no shear strength. Okay, no tensile strength for shear to hold a panel to the wall. Right. A, what's wrong with A? A is a connector that's put in backwards. <laughs> and it's not, it's, it doesn't have a lock nut. It's not attached to the panel. Hey, Harris, should it even be inside the panel? Never. Thank you. Okay, so they've used it as a, as a way to go through the hole in the panel. It's not designed for that. So the conduit's probably too long. It's still wrong. Okay. Here, here's the notorious bootleg ground. <laughs> um, we plug in on the neutral, we come across and we hook it up to the ground screw. And when I plug in my tester, it shows that it's a grounded receptacle. It's still Correct. grounded, everybody. Okay. So this one, I didn't pull it out of the wall. I just don't do that. It was already out of the wall and they said, it's not working. Well, yeah, because your neutral's disconnected and you're, and these plug-in stab-in type outlets, uh, do they even sell them anymore, Harris? No, they don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, we never put these in. We always put it in with the screws. These are the worst things on the planet because they keep popping out. Okay. That's the truth. I can't tell, but is this a Zinsco? That, that's Zinsco. It says right on it, Zinsco. Yep. So I wanted everyone to... I mean, I, I see these on the internet all the time and someone will put this up and go, I can't tell, what is it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess reading is a problem. Um, so this one says Zinsco right on it. Um, again, it has that bus bar made of aluminum. Okay, we're gonna finish up with this one here. So this is an example. Again, this is not a real person. The one that we had was real. We had to take it off the internet because it was, it was so brutal because it was real. Some guy getting a piss knocked out of him. So. He, he's shutting off the panel. And what's he doing here, Harris? Pulling the breaker? All right, he's pulling out. He's, he's shutting the breaker off and it's arcing. Yeah, it's arcing. Okay, that's number one. That's number two. And then what's happening here, Harris? It's exploding and all that hot metal is flying all over the place. Uh, do you think he's hurt? I think he's dead. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So this is what happens. This white stuff that's flying all over is hot molten metal and slag. Flag. And this this vapor that's coming up here, um, 
it's in slow motion. Now this is a this is a dummy, literally, but they're just showing you what happens when you uh, do an inspection and it's bad. Okay, um, I had some stuff about smoke detectors on here uh, where they're required. Um, our SOPs don't require us to test them, right? That's I always it. test them. It doesn't. Okay. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, uh, my phone number is right here, 419-1313. It'll take texting. Um, Two Electric Guys, is on. we have a Facebook page and some other stuff. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, please unmute your mic and ask. Your uh, CEUs will be produced uh, Friday for you since uh, Dean is gone. Uh, they'll be in your, um, where you signed in, they'll be in your dashboard. Okay. Harris, do you uh, dare give us your phone number? Sure. 298-5677. Now remember, if you call Harris, be sure to set 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 aside about an hour of time or, or set the timer on your phone so you can get away from him. Or you can text me on my, you know, telephone 907-0941. So uh, the texting is nice because you take a picture, you send it to us, and if I can't answer it, I'll send it to Harris, and then Harris will answer it. We'll send it back. So we get we get a lot of pictures sent to us all the time, everybody. Yes, we do. Um, okay, we want to thank everybody for signing in tonight. Uh, this is the first class in a series that we're doing. Uh, the next two classes are up there. Um, it's going to be heaters and heat pumps. I, I think that's what we have listed, and then. One of the classes is how to run your business or how to start one. Be sure you're an LLC. Um, and then and then the next three will be on uh, uh, roofing, uh, plumbing, and I think it was stucco, stucco repairs. Um, and then we've got a couple on report writing and SOPs. Um, again, uh, thank you, everybody. Anything else? Otherwise, we're signing out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, bro. Thank you now. Thanks Have a great evening. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Bye. Good to see you guys. <laughs> there we go. We're exiting the building.